Hi there. Now for this question here, we're given that f of x equals 3x cubed minus 5x squared minus 58x plus 4t. And in the first part, we're asked to find the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 3 for two marks. So if you'd like to have a go at this, haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. When you come back, give me check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back then if you had a go. Now, to do this question, part A relies on understanding the remainder theorem. And as a brief reminder, although I've got tutorials on this on my website, it's that if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus p, then the remainder is f of p. And for this question, we can see that the p would be 3 here when you compare it. So in other words, what I'm saying is that that remainder, okay, let's just write in an intro here, that remainder is equal to f of 3. So all I need to do is just substitute for x as 3. So we're going to have 3 multiplied by 3 cubed, minus 5 times 3 squared, and then minus 58 times 3, and then plus 40. And if you work this out, say on a calculator, you end up with minus 98. So there's your remainder when it's divided by x minus 3. Now for part b, we're given that x minus 5 is a factor of f of x. And we're asked to find all the solutions of f of x equaling 0 for 5 marks. So again, if you'd like to have a go at this, just give you a moment to pause the video. OK, welcome back then if you had a go. So for part B, let's see how we're going to do this one. Well, we know that since x minus 5 is a factor of f of x, then f of x must be identical to x minus 5 multiplied by what would be a quadratic factor to give us this cubic expression. So we're going to say that that quadratic factor is of the form ax squared then plus bx plus c. Now we need to work out what this quadratic factor is. And there's several ways that we can do this. And one way would be, say, by doing algebraic long division. I could divide x minus 5 into the polynomial here, and that would give me the quadratic factor. And I'll do that at the end, because it's really a slightly longer way. But you might prefer it, though. Another way is that we could go about just filling in these values. For instance, for a, that's going to be obvious, because we need x times ax squared. Well, that's going to give us an ax cubed value. And so comparing it to this, this is going to have to be 3 here. So if I delete that, it's going to have to be 3. So that x times 3x squared gives us the 3x cubed. If we now turn towards the c value, we know that minus 5 multiplied by the c value has got to return plus 40. And that can only be minus 8. So here we've got minus 8. Now as for the b value, the coefficient of x, we can find this in two ways, say, by comparing the x squared terms or comparing the x terms. And again, I'll show you both ways. Suppose we were going to compare the x squared terms. Let's just put this down here, let's say about here. Compare the x squared terms. Well, if we're doing that, we get x squared terms when we multiply x with bx. Okay, and we're going to get an x squared term when we multiply minus 5 with the 3x squared. So if we do that, x times bx, well that's going to be bx squared. And if we do minus 5 
times the 3x squared, that's going to be minus 15x squared. And as far as x squared terms go, we've got to get minus 5x squared. So this is going to be equal to minus 5x squared. So if I add 15x squared to both sides, I end up with bx squared equals 15x squared minus 5x squared, which is 10x squared. And you can see that b must be equal to 10. So therefore, b equals 10. So that's comparing the x squared terms. Another way would be to compare, and we'll do this in blue here, compare the x terms. And where would the x terms come from? Well, that would be multiplying x with, say, the minus 8. x times minus 8. And also, you'll get an x term when you multiply minus 5 with bx. So if we do that, we've got x times minus 8. Well, that's going to be minus 8x. We're going to have minus 5 times bx. That's minus 5bx. And this should equal the x term we get here, which is minus 58x. So with this one, if I add 8x to both sides, I therefore have minus 5bx equals minus 58x plus 8x. That's going to be minus 50x. And from here, b must be equal to 10. Minus 5 times 10 would give us the minus 50. So therefore, b would equal 10. So you've got two methods then that we can now get the value of b. So whatever method we use there, we're going to have x minus 5 then multiplied by 3x squared. We've got for b, it's 10, so plus 10x minus the 8. And we should be able to factorize this further. OK, this quadratic factor here can be split into two other linear factors. We'll have a 3x and an x to give 3x squared. And for two numbers that multiply together to give minus 8, we could have minus 2 and plus 4. Minus 2 there and plus 4 there. And you can check out we get 12x when you do 3x times plus 4. And minus 2 times x is minus 2x. So you've got 12x minus 2x, which gives us the 10x. So we can say that therefore when f of x equals 0, then each of these factors would equal 0. So if that's the case, if x minus 5 equals 0, x would equal 5. If 3x minus 2 equals 0, rearranging that, x would equal 2 thirds. And if x plus 4 equals 0, then x would equal minus 4. OK? Now another way you could find the quadratic factor is by algebraic long division. That is, we divide x minus 5 into our polynomial. It's a slightly longer way, and for that reason, I wouldn't generally do it. But I'll show you it as an alternative if you're not happy with this particular method down here. I'm assuming also that you're familiar with algebraic long division. If not, you can always check this out on my website. So we start off with, what do you multiply x by to give us 3x cubed? Well, it's going to be 3x squared. And if you multiply 3x squared with x minus 5, you get 3x cubed. And 3x squared times minus 5 gives minus 15x squared. We subtract now to work out what the remainder is. And if we do that, 3x cubed minus 3x cubed is 0. Minus 5x squared minus minus 15x squared becomes 10x squared. Bring down the next term, which is minus 58x. And then we start again by saying, what do you multiply x by to give 10x squared? Well, that's going to be plus 10x. And 10x times x minus 5 would give me 10x squared then minus 50x. Again, we subtract to find out the remainder. And we end up with 0 here. And then minus 58x minus minus 50x 
is going to be minus 8x. And then we bring down the next term, which is plus 40. And we say, what do we multiply x by here to get minus 8x? Well, that's going to be minus 8. Minus 8 times x is minus 8x. And then minus 8 times minus 5 is plus 40. And can you see that when we subtract these two, we end up with no remainder. And that's what we'd expect because x minus 5 is a factor. It goes into this without leaving a remainder. And from this, 3x squared plus 10x minus 8 was our quadratic factor. So an alternative way then of working this out. So you've got algebraic long division or where you can compare the x squared terms or the x terms. Okay?